This is example 12-9, and we're going to have a surface profile of a uh, varying flow. So we have a rectangular channel made of unfinished concrete, has a width of 1.5 meter and a slope of 0 0.06, so it's relatively steep. Um, determine the surface profile for a flow of 8.5 meters, uh, and the, uh, the actual depth at this location is 2 meters and sketch this profile and we're given what the uh, surface roughness coefficient is so remember we have this big table where we can look everything up um, but in this table we need to know what the uh, what the slope is what the critical slope is uh, we need to know what the critical depth is and we know we need to know what the normal depth is so let's start with the critical um <clears throat> with the critical slope and uh, with the critical depth i'm sorry it's the easiest one, YC, right? Remember, that is oops, Q squared over B squared times G to the one third. It's the easiest one because we have everything handy, right? So that would be 8.5 cubic meters per second squared width was 1.5 meters squared times 9.81 meters per second squared oops it's a not a round all that to the one third gives me 1.48478 meters all right that's our first one <coughs> so we're given y now we have YC. Um, next, let's figure out what our critical slope is. Right? So SC is N squared times G times AC divided by B top times RHC to the four third. All right, so let's figure all these out start with the critical uh, flow area so ac <clears throat> it's a rectangular channel so it's easy it's just b times yc so that'd be 1.8 1 1.5 meters times 1.48478 meters so almost uh 1.5 so it'd be 2.22717 meters squared that's our ac um then our b top let's do right here is b top of course is just equal to b that is equal to 1.5 meters well, it's a rectangular channel, so that the top, you know, doesn't the, the flow width doesn't change. Then to get our hydraulic radius, RH, right, we need to know what P is. So PC, the wetted perimeter. PC is equal to in a uh, rectangular channel. Right, it's two times the depth. It's the two sides. YC uh, plus the bottom top no because it's not interacting with the surface so that'd be two times 1.48478 meters plus 1.5 meters that is equal to 4.46956 meters that means our hydraulic radius is just AC over PC is equal to 2.22717 meters squared divided by 4.46956 meters is equal to 0 0.498 two nine seven meters 
all right with that we can go back to our equation and plug stuff in so that means sc just as a reminder that uh, looks more like an h n squared times g times ac divided by b top times r hc to the four third and that is equal to what was our n was 12 uh -huh. 0 0.012 and then seconds over meters to the one third squared times 9.81 meters per second squared our AC was 2.22717 meters squared divided by B top we said was 1.5 meters and then our our hydraulic radius 0 0.49 eight two nine seven meters to the four third and that gives me a slope of zero point zero zero five three one all right again let's look at units we have the seconds right here are squared and the second squared with that cancel out then we have meters, we have meters to the third on the top. At the bottom we'd have, we have squared, so it would be six third, ten thirds, um, it's two thirds, it would be six thirds, six divided by three uh, is two, and then the three, and then with that, meters cancel out okay so we have the right units now in this case um, the slope that we were given was zero zero six so we know that for our table we know that s zero the one that we're given is greater than the critical so that means it's a steep slope and that steep slope right is the Yes, so we know that. So that's good. All right, so we know at least what what general category we're in. Now, what we need to find is the uh, the regular flow depth, y n. And to do that, we have to go through the entire process that we've done on earlier examples, right? To find uh, the flow based on the on the uh, um, on the slope and on the the flow rate. Right, to do that, we will have to find our flow area, which is y n times b. We'll need to know what our, our uh, um, hydraulic radius and what our wetted perimeter is. 2 times y n plus b. And those together, we can then stick into our standard equation for the flow. So that will be q is equal to a to the 5 thirds times s0 to 1 half divided by n times p to the 2 thirds All right that's our standard matting equation now unlike before we're just plugging the numbers here we're looking for a y in so we have to plug that in right so we have a to the 5 third we said that was y n times b to the 5 third times s0 we're given so we can leave that s0 to 1 half n we're given and p we calculated as 2 y n plus b to 2 thirds now if we look at this equation we have q we have B and we have S0 and we have N. So we have all everything that we need. However, 
this does look uh, a little a little nasty but we can actually solve this relatively easily so let's start by separating stuff out a little bit um, let's multiply by uh, n and divide by s0 the square root of s0 so we'd have q times n divided by s0 to the one half is equal to y n times b to the five thirds divided by two y n plus b to the two thirds. Now the good thing is both of these are uh, the exponents are thirds, so we can just raise everything to the third power and get rid of those. Make it a little easier to see. So it'd be q to the third n to the third s0 to the 3 half and that is equal to y n times b to the fifth and 2 y n plus b squared. Now the good thing is that the top one here doesn't have anything in it so we can just multiply those out y b to the fifth y n to the fifth so if this out with a sum that would be a little painful but for the bottom one <coughs> we can foil it out so it'd be four y n uh, squared plus two four times y times b times y n plus b squared All right, so that now we have to, it looks a little easier to solve for yn, so let's multiply this whole thing. So we would get q to the third times n to the third divided by s0 three halves times four yn squared plus for b y n plus b squared is equal to b squared times y n to the fifth. All right. Now, this is just a fifth order polynomial. So let's bring everything to one side and then we'll solve it. So if we bring everything to one side, um, what do we have? Well, actually, what we'll do, we'll divide by this factor here as well, because then we don't have to have it a whole bunch of times. So we would have for the first term there, we would have S0 to the 3 half times B to the 5th, Q to the 3rd power times N to the 3rd power, all oh, this times y n to the fifth that'd be positive because it's on its own side and then the other part here divided by this so we can write this straight out so it'd be minus four times y n squared oh not plus but minus brought everything over minus four b times y n minus b squared is equal to zero well, we could have multiplied that all in, but then we'd have the Q's and the N, the S's all over the place. Here we have it just in one term. Makes it a little easier to, to write and work with. We stick in numbers. Then we get our slope, a fairly steep slope, so 0 0.06 meters per meters, 3 half. The width was 1.5 meters. That is to the fifth. Q was 8.5 cubic meters per second. And that is to the third. And then our N, 0 0.012 seconds meter to the one third. All of that to the third. That's our 
just our first uh, coefficient y into the fifth fortunately the other ones are, are much easier minus four times y n squared minus four times the uh, the width was 1.5 meters we really need a need a bracket there 1.5 meters times y n and then minus 1.5 meter squared all that is equal to zero all right so let's plug in numbers so we get 105.1678 uh, meters to the minus three times y n to the fifth minus four times y n squared and we'll change there four times 1.5 is six meters times let's connect those to the dots there y n and then minus 1.5 squared is 2.25 meter squared and all of that equal to zero now if we plug that in and solve it then again we'll give uh, we'll get five different values there's only one that's realistic in all those and so we can say y n is equal to 0 0.583487 seven meters all right so just as a reminder we said that y we're given at the very top the flow depth is two meters and we calculated y c further up that was where is our y c one four eight four seven eight One point four, one point four eight, one point four eight. Remember this: one point four eight four seven eight. Doesn't really matter. Four seven eight meters. All right. So that means we put them in order. So the order would be. The largest one is y n as y. I'm sorry. Right. That means y is greater than y c is greater than y n. And all we have to do then is go back to our table, look into the table, and that means we already knew that we were in the steep slope, so we'll get s one is our specification. And then we just sketch it out. All right, so we'll have our bottom of our of our channel right there, and maybe we'll do it in red right here. Right, we know that we have the flow depth that we would expect if we have constant flow. Right, this would be y n. Then we would know this. Is if it were critical so that depth is yc and if we look into our table then we know that kind of the flow shape the surface profile is going to look something like this At this distance then somewhere there i don't know exactly that will be our y so this is uh, how we get our surface profile Right, so we went through, we calculated what the normal depth is, we calculated what the critical depth is, we calculated what the critical slope is, and based on all that, we could find the surface profile for example 12-9.